Hello everyone, my name is Kelly. Welcome to my channel. So I've been really excited to prepare this video for you guys because it's a topic that I'm really interested in and I really enjoy talking about, so I'm excited to share with you. Um, this is part one of a two-part video series that I'm going to be doing on the female hormone balance. Now, I have not mentioned this yet in my previous videos, but I am a registered nurse with an active license, and I used to work in allopathic, which is mainstream medicine, for five years until several of um, my own personal health experiences and years of my own personal research ended up um, driving me to walk away from my career. And now I am passionate about holistic health and nutrition and sharing my own personal experiences to um, help other people heal and prevent health issues. So for the record, I do want to say that I am not against allopathic medicine in any way. In fact, we do use it in our own lives appropriately. Um, I just no longer promote or support the overuse and abuse of the allopathic model. So, with that being said, if you have seen my health journey video, which is the first video that I uploaded on my channel, um, then you'll know that I was experiencing some health issues this winter that I was able to heal naturally. And, um, but that is not exactly where my health journey originally started. Um, I am going to be doing a separate video about this so that I can um, have time to give you guys more details about it. I'm not going to go into it right now, but... I had some health issues back in my early 20s that I was also able to heal um, holistically. And um, it was through that experience, um, which was about six months into my nursing career, it was through that experience that I really started diving into my own personal research on um, holistic and alternative medicine. And at that time, through that research, I started taking active steps to protect my hormonal health. And that was about eight years ago now. So when I started seeing my functional medicine doctor this winter, he ran a lot of comprehensive testing on me. And I know I've shared with um, you guys some of the tests that um, did not turn out so well and that um, the things that were wrong with my health. But what I haven't shared yet is that some of the tests that were done actually turned out really great. I had wonderful results. And um, one of those things was um, actually all of my hormone levels, my thyroid, my adrenals, they were all functioning great. And, um, but my female, home, my female hormones, they are on point right now, you guys, they are excellent. Um, my progesterone and estrogen levels were tested during my luteal phase. And um, my progesterone to estrogen ratio is 25 to 1, which I cannot ask for anything better than that. Um, so, before I start, I just want to reiterate that I am not a doctor. I will not be giving you any medical advice in this video. I will simply be sharing my own personal experience with you. Um, I just shared with you that my estrogen and progesterone levels are perfectly balanced. And next, I'm going to be sharing with you all of the measures that I have personally been taking based on my own research for the last eight years to try to ensure good hormonal health. And I'm simply inviting you to draw your own conclusions about um, the connections. So what exactly am I talking about when I talk about the female hormone balance? Well, I'm specifically talking about this beautiful, intricate dance during a woman's monthly cycle between two hormones that are known as estrogen and progesterone. So just very briefly, what, it, what are the roles of these two hormones in the body? Well, progesterone is also known as the happy hormone, which we can never get enough of, ladies. It helps us feel happy, calm, content. Um, on the other hand, estrogen is actually a cell proliferator, which means that it causes huge amounts of cellular growth in the body. So the imbalance that I'm going to be talking about between these two hormones is one of estrogen dominance, which is simply a situation where estrogen levels are too high in the body in comparison to progesterone levels. Um, now this problem is incredibly common in our modern world today. It's not normal but it is very common and um, it's becoming a huge problem.
Um, why is this a problem? Why do we not want estrogen levels to be too high in our body? Well, I like to compare estrogen to fire. Um, now, if we keep fire under control, it has many important, wonderful functions, and um, it's an amazing, necessary blessing. But what happens if we let fire get out of control? Um, well, those results can be absolutely devastating, and estrogen is the same exact way, you guys. Um, it is a very necessary hormone that serves very important functions in our body. However, it's a hormone that we want to keep a really tight rein on to make sure that it does not get out of control. Um, so just a couple of important functions of estrogen. It is the hormone responsible for maturing a young girl's body when she goes through the changes of puberty, like, um, like breast development. And it also thickens the lining of the uterus during the monthly cycle to prepare it to, to prepare the uterus to nourish a fertilized egg should pregnancy occur. However, now we're going to look at some symptoms of estrogen dominance, which is where estrogen is too high, so that you can see what kind of harm excessive estrogen levels can do in your body. So in the second part of my video, I am going to be talking about exactly why estrogen dominance is so prevalent today, but right now I'm going to start talking about the symptoms of estrogen dominance. So the first one I want to talk about is early onset of puberty for a young girl. You guys, the average age of a girl getting her first period today is age 9. Just a couple of generations ago, it was age 16. Age 16, just, just two generations ago, that's how rapidly things have changed. Um, now, I do want to point out and make this distinction for you, that just because something is common and prevalent in many people does not mean that it is physiologically normal. It is not physiologically normal for a girl to get her period at that age. It is actually a symptom of estrogen dominance. So another one, another symptom is issues with your period. And I am going to be coming back in just a minute or two to talk more about this. But real quickly, issues like heavy bleeding, PMS, heavy cramping, um, not normal, estrogen dominance. Depression. Um, this is due to a deficiency of that happy hormone progesterone when estrogen is too high. Headaches due to estrogen's effects on vasodilation. Fatigue, hair loss, infertility, and sadly we all know how common that is today. Now some later symptoms of estrogen dominance. This would be like when estrogen has been allowed to just rage like an uncontrolled fire in a woman's body over the course of um, over the course of years. Some later symptoms would be endometriosis, uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, and because of estrogen's effects on cellular proliferation, it does promote the growth of certain types of cancers like breast cancer and ovarian cancer. All right, so talking about what is and isn't physiologically normal, ladies, let's talk about exactly what a normal period is supposed to look like. Now, this really needs to be addressed because I'm sad to see that most women have a really common misconception that periods are just supposed to be absolutely horrible. That's just the way that it's supposed to be. It's the way that we were designed. Um, it can seem normal to most people that periods um, should be heavy or really painful, have a lot of cramping, or that they should be associated with moodiness or PMS. Um, but I have some really good news for you that um, these symptoms are actually not normal at all, and it does not have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way for you every month. Um, if you are suffering with any symptoms of abnormal periods, then just know that I have compassion for you and you are the reason that I am making this video right now. Because I myself suffered from those symptoms for years, all throughout high school and college. And um, things didn't start changing for me until I started making the transition to holistic nutrition and started taking proactive steps to correct and um, to protect my hormonal levels. So um, let's talk about exactly what a normal, a normal period is supposed to look like. Um, it's supposed to be a moderate amount of bright red blood from start to finish 
no brown, no dark blood, no clots, um, just lasts for five to seven days, no cramping or pain, no PMS, no cycle length abnormalities, no excessive bloating or GI symptoms. Um, what is normal is just maybe a slight amount of heaviness, like a heavy feeling in the pelvis or just a slight amount of bloating. And I want to give you a visual as to, you know, why um, just a mild symptom like that is considered normal. Now, I'm a huge dork, so I have clay uterine models. Um, this is the size and weight of your uterus when you are not menstruating, just at any other point throughout your cycle. This weighs four ounces. Now this is the change that happens in your uterus when you are menstruating. Um, it doubles in both weight and size to eight ounces. So, you know, it is normal to have just a slight, um, not uncomfortable or painful, but just a slightly different sensation of heaviness in your pelvis when you have an organ sitting in there, nice and low in your pelvic area that is literally doubling in size every month. So, like I said, it's, it's not a painful sensation at all, but just, you know, it's a noticeable difference. And, yeah, just for a side-by-side -side comparison, that's the difference between the two. So... Um, does this sound too good to be true to you guys? <laughs> um, does it sound like I'm speaking the truth? Um, I'm here to tell you that it is not too good to be true because this is what my periods look like now and it's been like this for years for me. Um, and I do have a real appreciation for my period now because I know how horrible it used to be and what I used to go through with it and uh, my period is just... A complete non-issue now. So yeah, this all of these things can be another symptom of estrogen dominance. Um, estrogen dominance is not the only cause of abnormal periods. Um, there are also things like uterine malplacement and things of that nature, which I might make another video on someday because I have a lot of thoughts on that topic as well. Um, but estrogen dominance is definitely a big cause. So um, I'm going to wrap up this first part of my video and come back to you guys at a later date with the second part of my video. And in that one, I'm going to talk about all of the causes of estrogen dominance and what I have personally done to heal and to protect my female hormones over the years. All right, take care, guys. Have a good night.